Frida, you touch on California sanctuary state law, and California is considered a place that not only welcomes immigrants, but also offers protection no matter their legal status. When recently was this not the case? Well, um, this is why I focus my story on Proposition 187, which was approved overwhelmingly by voters in the state in 1994, and then was later struck down by, by the courts. But um, at that time, the state was going through this really you know, intense economic recession. It lost hundreds of thousands of jobs. And at the same time, there was this really um, rapid increase in the Latino population in the decades that uh, preceded the 1990s. And so it, you know, it became a really tense time for the state in which a lot of people felt that immigrants were in part to blame for the economic woes of the state. And so that's one um, you know, period of the, uh, of the state history that became really pivotal um, and that people point to as a time when it really started changing um, the state's perception of immigrants and also the power of Latino voters in the state. And so um, since the 1990s, we've moved more towards a more you know, dem uh, liberal and welcoming stance uh, for immigrants. And you, you also report about the impact of Prop 187 on Morgan Hill, a suburb of San Jose. Can you tell us a, a bit more about that community and what happened there during the controversy over Prop 187? Yeah, so I mean, this is a controversy that was felt all over the state. Um, but I focused on this little, little suburb uh, near San Jose because it really showed some of the tensions that people were feeling um, at the time of Proposition 187. So a lot of uh, Latinos there, regardless of age, I spoke with people who were 10 years old at the time, 14 years old, you know, in their 40s. And they really felt that this proposition was not only targeting um, immigrants who were illegally in the country without legal status, but that it was also targeting Latinos as a whole, because what it required um, government officials, local law enforcement, education officials at schools was to check for the immigration status of people in order to give them access to, um, to public, uh, publicly funded services, including education. And so the feeling was really that because of the way you looked, um, you could be racially profiled. And so it, it kind of unified people in a way that, that it hadn't uh, before in the state, Latinos. Um, that was one of the reason, and reasons I focused um, my story there. But the other reason was it really, you could see how that time and their opposition to Prop 187 changed Latinos in that community. It really made them more you know, conscious of the importance of voting and of having your uh, voice uh, heard. And also for some people, it even changed their careers and what they do today. And in, in speaking about that, um, with the majority of California voters voting for 187, why is it that Prop 187 and the subsequent backlash is actually credited for helping to shift California's stance when it comes to illegal immigration? Well, one reason people focus on a lot is the impact on Latino voters. Um, at the time, there were um, you know, a lot of people who were eligible to become citizens that had not taken that step. And so right after Prop 187 was approved by voters, and we're talking about you know, 50 out of 58 counties in the state that approved Proposition 187. So after, after that election, a lot of people realized that they needed to do more to register voters and help people um, naturalized if they hadn't done so. Um, and so it's credited with increasing the number of Latino voters in the state. And then it was also a catalyst for a generation of Latino elected officials. We're talking about, you know, people like Senator Kevin De Leon, who were, who, who say that time was really important for them to decide to be, um, to become, you know, politicians and, and, and be a part in politics. And like them, there's countless of people, countless people in the state that went through that, you know, realization that they wanted to be a bigger part of the decisions in, in, in California. That's one big part of the story. The other part is that the state changed in non-Latino voters as well. There were a lot of white conservative voters who left the state 
Other people um, moved to cities, which uh, bigger cities like in, in the Los Angeles and the Bay Area, and those areas tend to be more more liberal, and 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 so that changed um, the state as a whole as well to the point where you know the surveys that show that seven in ten Californians all over the state uh, believe that immigrants are a benefit and not a burden, and that was not the case in the 90s. Very interesting. Farida Javala Romero, thank you so much. Thank you.